Well, good evening, everyone. David McGuffin here on my third night, consecutive night of showcasing Europe. Tonight, I'm going to cut right to the chase because I'm winging it all here alone. Leslie's not here to help me produce it and get it going. And uh, so uh, I'm all set up and I'm just going to go bang, 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 bang all through these topics. We're talking tonight about uh, some my tours in Italy, my tours in Greece, my tours in Croatia, a land and cruise tour, and then finally exploring beyond Europe. Uh, the last point that I'm going to talk about is uh, a new uh, safari tour that I'm arranging in Tanzania. So without any further ado, let me get going on here. Uh, as in the past, uh, we've got 23 tour routes all over Europe. This is these 17 countries that are in green. Tonight, as I mentioned, we're talking talking about Italy, Greece, Croatia, and Tanzania, or as Tanzania, as they say there, safari. Tonight, our specials for this uh, showcase is uh, one uh, 100 bucks off any, um, any tour that we're doing to Italy, April, May, September, October. Uh, and the first tour I want to talk about is the Amalfian Islands tour. It begins in the island of Ischia, which is just off the coast of Naples. This is our hotel here, and it is a beautiful spa hotel because Ischia is a volcanic island. And so hot water baths are all over the place. Just a wonderful place. And of course, we got to have the aperitivo of uh, Campari and Aperol Spritz. Uh, we have a wonderful dining room and a wait staff down there that helps us and serves us dinner. And this is the uh, town of Laco Amino and a big mushroom rock that's a symbol of that town. Just uh, kind of going around the island, there's five different villages or main towns around the island. One of these is a, uh, a, um, an area that has a gardens that are just beautiful to go to. It's down in a ravine, so there's tropical gardens. And here we are up on the gardens overlooking the town of uh, Forio. This is a seaside there in Forio, our beach uh, from right from our hotel balcony, our pool at the hotel, just a little Vespa in the town of Forio. And this is the main street in Forio as well. One day we go to the island of Procida, which is only about a 20 minute ferry ride over, but it is a huge and a massive island as far as culture is concerned, because up until the last uh, few a um, few decades, it was just a fisherman's village in a fisherman's uh, area. So Procida in 2022 was the uh, European capital of culture. The uh, And uh, so it's got a lot of claim to fame. We take a walking tour with a local guide here. And then we get to see this wonderful village that is just, uh, you know, a sight for sore eyes with the pastel colors and everything else. So this is on the island of Prochita. That's my group that was with us the last uh, last year in April. Uh, then one day we go to Capri, the uh, neighboring island of Capri. Capri is about an hour and 10 minutes away by ferry from uh, our island, our home island of Ischia. And we visit Capri, which is famous for the Blue Caves. These are uh, one of my groups another time that we're up there looking at these rocks that are down there called the Faro Leone, Faro Leone rocks. There you go. And just you can see the weather is wonderful in April and May when we visit this. Just a look down into the uh, Capri town as well. Charlotte and I enjoy getting out and getting around. After those uh, three nights there on that item in Ischia, we go back to the mainland. We visit Naples. Naples is uh, a huge city of, uh, gosh, I think about four million people all spread out across that valley. That mountain in the background is Mount Vesuvius with its top blown off. And in between that is uh, back from Vesuvius uh, all the way to Naples is loaded with people, loaded with tomatoes and olives and oranges and everything else. We stop and have a traditional Neapolitan pizza lunch right in the heart of Naples. And then we go out of Naples and we go to the uh, to the archaeological site of Pompeii, which in um, 79 AD uh, erupted, Mount Vesuvius erupted and covered this, uh, this area with uh, about 12 feet of ash 
And after excavations began in the late 1800s, it was uh, discovered that the, the city below those ashes was totally intact. Uh, this is even a, a, a plaster cask of a, a, a unfortunate gentleman who lost his life in the eruption of that. So this is Pompeii, an ancient Roman city. We uh, go to Sorrento, which is further down beyond Vesuvius. And we stay in Sorrento for four nights at this hotel, up high on the hill, overlooking the Bay of Naples. Looking back over behind me, actually, is the island of Ischia. And it just has wonderful views all over the place. This is a view of our balcony, one of our bedrooms, bathrooms, and the front of the hotel and the pool and dining area. Sunset is so dramatic, setting over Ischia in the Bay of Naples uh, as we look at that. Sorrento Town is a wonderful place, too. A lot of good eateries, and it's a lived-in town. People who live there are uh, residents of Sorrento, and there are tourists there from all parts of the world, but uh, they don't tend to stay overnight quite so much, so it's a really nice place to visit. Sorrento has a harbor and ferries as well, and this is just some of the scenes from Sorrento Town. On our last evening, we go out to a farmhouse outside of Sorrento, and this family invites us in. The mom tells, shows us how to make this particular type of cheese called Monaco cheese, uh, which is a cow's milk cheese similar to um, our um, uh, burrata cheese, and, um, but uh, it's made with cow's milk instead of goat and sheep milk. And we have a great dinner around that in their outdoor cafe. The Amalfi Coast is what people go down here for, and one of the days we spend a whole day on the Amalfi Coast, visiting along the waterside, driving with a professional bus driver, visiting the towns of, uh, like here is um, uh, Positano, we visit Amalfi Town, all of those towns along through here are just beautiful, and uh, we spend, like I say, the entire day visiting those towns around the Amalfi Coast. We end up in the town of Amalfi, uh, get a chance to have lunch. We may even be able to take a little cruise on the water as well, catch our bus back to Sorrento uh, for the evening. This is still Amalfi Town here and Amalfi as well. There's a boat tour and looking down to uh, some of the Amalfi Coast drives. From there, we are about to end our tour. So we're three days in Ischia, four days in Sorrento, the last night we go up to Rome, we're in Rome, we visit the Colosseum in Rome and have a grand farewell dinner together. That is the, the uh, Amalfi and Island tour. The next one I want to show you is uh, the Best of Sicily tour. I don't get to, I haven't done this since COVID, but I'm going to do the Best of Sicily in April of this year. So I'd love to have you guys join me on that. It begins in the town of Palermo. Remember, Sicily is the football at the foot of the boot of uh, the Italian peninsula boot. Palermo is a wonderful city. Uh, it is uh, just loaded with a, a mixture of culture between uh, Spanish, North African, Moorish, Greek, um, and Italian as well. And so you can even see a dome of a mosque that is there from centuries past. We leave, uh, we leave uh, that town and we go on to see some of the best Greek best preserved Greek temples in all of the Mediterranean. Here is Segesta. It's a Greek temple out in the middle of nowhere, and you can see that it is preserved much more so than even the ones in Athens. This town is called Erice, and it's perched on a hill overlooking the seaside. Just a beautiful view to uh, looking to the west in the town of Thropony there below that. This is down in Thropony, and this is a fisherman town down there. And it's a great place to go, but it's also known just south of Thropony for salt flats and uh, mining or harvesting sea salt. Where the water comes in, the water is flushed out, the salt dries, and is scraped up. And so this is a, a whole business is made for that sea salt. Then we leave and we go to the south side of the island. Uh, actually, the island has three points of Sicily, and uh, the Italian word, the Sicilian word is Triacrina, Triacrina, so three sides. So now we're down on the, the south side at Agrigento, another Greek temple civilization where they are, look at how 
richly and vastly preserved those temples are. Uh, they, they've never fallen. They've been preserved. And one of the reasons that they were preserved is because after the fall of uh, Greece and Rome, uh, the Christian church took over and devised and uh, re retrofitted all of these temples into Christian churches. Uh, we'll also go to a Roman villa that was covered with a layer of about 15 feet of mud for centuries and centuries and centuries. And it wasn't until about six decades ago that it was unearthed and totally intact Roman uh, mosaics are there to be seen. And these are uh, various scenes. This is the gymnasium scene of the Roman ladies practicing uh, various types of uh, aerobic exercises. We'll leave there and we go to uh, another point over on the east side of the island and we visit Syracuse and Ortigia Island. Here is a Greek theater, totally intact, built into the, the hillside. You can see I've already shown you two things of spaghetti and clams. Uh, I love that menu and it is fresh right out of the sea all over Sicily. This is uh, the fish market right there in uh, the in Syracuse and Ortigia Island. And every morning shows up the fishermen are selling their wares and uh, balking out, uh, barking out all their orders about how much things are, come buy them, how much they cost, come get them. Uh, then we go way up to the northern part of Sicily to the third point up there called Tarmina. That is where basically it's about uh, four or five miles across to the, the very toe of the Italian peninsula. Here's another Greek theater. We're looking back at the mountain in the far background is uh, Mount Vesuvius, but this is a wonderfully preserved Greek theater. They still even have um, productions during the summertime at that Greek theater. All those clouds are not clouds. That's a, kind of a, the steam and eruption coming out of Mount Vesuvius there in the background. Uh, these are Ramona and uh, Katie that were with me a few years back, uh, right there at the same area, looking at that same Greek theater in Taramina. This is just some of the countryside in the middle of the uh, island of uh, Sicily. And this is Mount Vesuvius blowing a stack. So that is Sicily in a nutshell. We'd love to have you join us. That's in mid-April of this year is the next time I'm going and there's space available. We'd love to have you go. Essence of Italy and the Best of Italy tour. Essence of Italy is 10 days. The Best of Italy is 15 days. I know I've talked about this on Travel Talk Tuesday a lot. And these two tours are my most popular tours in Italy and also actually in Europe as well. And um, so it begins in Rome. We visit the Roman uh, Colosseum. I've already shown you that. The Roman Forum, St. Peter's Basilica, and the Vatican Museum as well. And uh, so Trevi Fountain, Spanish Steps, we hit all of that. We get on a train, we go to the Cinque Terre, which is in the Ligurian area on the seaside. This is the town of Monterosso al Mare. It's a beautiful place. This is the town of Vernazza, another sh shot of Monterosso. Uh, fish, again, is prominent right there. And I always love to buy a whole fish there and share it with the table. This is uh, Rio Maggiore and the town of Monterolo, Monterolo, and once again, Monterosso al Mare. Just a nice, peaceful two-day vacation. And uh, this is one of the villas, Villa Adriana Hotel, that <coughs> we often stay at. Excuse me there. Volterra is the next stop. Volterra is my favorite hill town in all of Tuscany. It's just about 1,200 feet above sea level. So even if it's hot in the valley, it's always cool up in Volterra. It is an Etruscan city dating back many, many centuries, even before the Romans. And then from Volterra, we go on to Florence. Florence is uh, also famous because of being the cradle of Renaissance. And then we visit Venice as well. From Florence, we're two nights there. We go up to Venice for two days and uh, we're there. And this is the Piazza San Marco and San, St. Mark's Cathedral, the Rialto Bridge, the Grand Canal, uh, another one of the smaller little canals. So if you get three blocks off of those areas that I just mentioned to you, Venice becomes very, very small. About 60,000 people live there and that's it. So Venice, this is the island of uh, Murano as well, or no, actually, 
this is the island of Burano, where a lot of lace and everything is being made as well. And this is the island of Murano, which is famous for the Venetian glass. From there, we uh, go to Lake Como, which is at the foothills of the Alps. And uh, it's just a beautiful place. We stay about halfway up the lake into the crotch area of the lake, either in Bellagio or um, uh, Verena. And we just have a great time there spending some time. You can even take a dip into the lake if it's not too cold. And we've done that before in the past again. Uh, there's a lot of steps in this town, especially Bellagio and, and Verena, because you go from the seaside all the way up to the town, which is on the top. And we finish up in Milan. This is the Grand Cathedral in Milan and one of the uh, the castle by the Sforza family. And also the Last Supper is there too. But in order to go there, you need to make advanced reservations ahead of time. But we can take photos there, and, and uh, my entire life, I've never been able to do that into the last few days. Here, right next to the cathedral, is a the the world's first indoor mall, and it's called the Galleria Mall, right there in the heart of Milan. The next, that was the best of Italy, and the essence of Italy ends in Florence. The best of Italy ends in Milan. I also want to talk to you about the Tuscan Villa vacation. We uh, center ourselves. Uh, actually, there's uh, it, it, you can add Rome on too for an extra two days as well. And we center ourselves and have Florence as the bookends of the tour. We begin one night in Florence, have a dinner together, and then we head out to the countryside. We visit uh, San, uh, San Gimignano, the American cemetery down. I guess these are some meals in Florence, and this is some Florence pictures, the Ponte Vecchio. And of course, the cathedral there in Florence as well. This is our group last July. We were there on the bridge after we had dinner. And uh, this is the Academia Museum with famous statue of Michelangelo David there in the background. There he is all by himself. And our guide, my friend Paola, who uh, shows us around with such great uh, gusto and pleasure. We love having her as our local guide there in Florence. We visit the American Cemetery just south of Florence, and we stop by there for an hour or two to pay our respects to those who uh, liberate to our American boys and women that uh, liberated the Italian peninsula in 1943, marching up from Sicily all the way up to through the Alps into Germany. And then we visit a little town just north of there, or just south there, called Greve and Chianti, and we have lunch there. This is my friends, the La Rosa family and some others a few years back at the uh, Black Rooster of Chianti, representing the Chianti Classico type of wine there. Then it's seven nights in Podero Macampo. We call it a villa, an agriturismo. And this is a photo Charlotte took a few years back and uh, it kind of sums up the whole thing. Good wine, good friends, good times, good vacations. And uh, this is the pool at Marcampo that uh, we have a villa that has, uh, let's see, uh, six, six rooms, three room, three hotel type of rooms and three apartments. And we two times a year go there and spend seven nights here at Marcampo. You can see it is a beautiful place. We have a cooking lesson there. Uh, we get to, maybe if you're there in the fall, see the wine harvested. This is some of the ravioli that they make at the cooking lesson. Another shot of the Marcampo. Claudia gives a tour of the vineyard and the wine cellar as well. This is the dining room area that we have. And uh, we even a lot of times have potluck dinners and we just stop at the local market. Everybody picks up something and you come back and uh, we assemble it all together and have a feast, a huge feast. Uh, this is Volterra, part of one of the little churches in Volterra town. There's a fortress by the Medici family there as well. And also looking at Volterra from a distance, approaching it uh, from the hillside beyond. That's Volterra. We, uh, Annie and her husband Francesco are local tour guides and uh, experts on wine. And so we have a wine tasting there as well. This is the Etruscan gate. The Etruscans were the predecessors to the Roman. And this is the only Etru intact Etruscan gate in all of Italy. From there, we uh, on that tour, we visit Pisa for a day. This is the Arno River. And of course, Pisa is famous for the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
right there. And we visit that and then go on to Lucca, which is a, actually a, an 18th century town. That's a, it's older than that, but it's built up and fortified with walls from the 18th century that uh, are just uh, amazing. And a lot of people like to ride bicycles around that as a tour uh, sightseeing uh, activity. This is looking into the walls. So in the churches and some of the places to eat, the main square there in um, uh, Luca as well. We also do a day trip to Siena and Siena is a medieval city. And this is, uh, you can see the cathedral in the background. That's the one on the right hand side and the Basilica of Katharina, the patron saint of, uh, of that area there, the stark uh, stone brick building as well. This is a group standing uh, in front of the cathedral there, right there. And this is the grand square here in Siena called Il Campo. And these are some friends that we had for lunch uh, just along the way at one of our favorite restaurants. And uh, also a family, Jeff and his family uh, a few years back, they were there at the time of the Paolio, which is a horse race. And they all got uh, different scarves representing the different neighborhoods or Contrada. After that, we go back to, after the seven nights at Marcampo, we go back to Florence for one final farewell dinner. Uh, we have that guided tour with Paola to the Academia Museum and have dinner together and uh, at one of my favorite restaurants. And then the tour is over after that. Jumping over a little bit, the best of Greece and Santorini in 12 days. Or if you don't want to add in Santorini, we can do the best of Greece in nine days. Show, showcase special on this one is 200 bucks off our best of Greece tour beginning October the 8th through the 19th. You can see it's uh, 200 bucks off of that. We begin in Delphi. All of these, as you know, are Greek, <laughs> Greek temples scattered throughout that entire peninsula. Delphi is the site of the ancient Oracle and in this valley filled with olive trees and everything north of the, uh, of the Corinth, um, the Gulf of Corinth. This is our hotel that we often stay at there. From there, we cross the uh, Gulf of Corinth and we go into the area where the Olympics first started on Olympia. And this is uh, walking through the archway, kind of like the tunnel that we would have at uh, modern day sports arenas, the tunnel where the team runs out. They would go through this tunnel into that arena down there. And that's where the track and everything is. There's also a fine museum there depicting some of the artifacts that have been collected as well. Uh, one of the hotels we stay in right there in Olympia has this pool and this wonderful view of the valley as well. From there we go south and we visit Nauplio. It's a town on, on a gulf, uh, just a nice little pristine town. You can see ro roads running straight and narrow, Bougainvillea all over the place. Uh, there's a big fortress up above that looking over to the bay. And so it's it's an option to hike up there or walk up there or take the bus up and walk down. It is beautiful. This is a Greek salad. We try to have one of those every day when we're visiting Greek Greece because it's just so different. No, no lettuce in a Greek salad there in Greece. And uh, I don't know what that is. It looked like a steak and uh, some kind of potato stuff. Uh, again, a scene in Nauplio and our friends dining uh, al fresco outdoors in Nauplio as well. From there, uh, we also visit the ancient city of Corinth. That's a city that uh, missionary Paul went to in the first century AD. And at that point, Corinth was a, a Greek city and had a, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, well, I guess they were all Greeks who lived there, but he was the bringing the message of Christ's salvation there and stayed there and was a uh, tent maker or sail maker, tent maker. A, a tent maker there. Charlotte showed up. Remember I told you I was by myself. She showed up and what came in the door. So she's over here nodding or not. <laughs> so Paul was a tent maker and uh, brought the message of Christ to those folks in Corinth. Uh, just a beautiful museum there as well. And a couple of temples to Apollo. Nearby is a canal that was built in the late in 1800s that goes for about, oh, maybe a little more than a uh, almost a mile through here, and uh, it was built uh, to connect the, the Aegean Sea with the Gulf of Corinth, so it'd be a shortcut to the north, but very quickly it went out of vogue, and uh, the ships became much larger than it could go through there, but it is a man-made wonder 
cut through there. We also visit um, the predecessor to the Greeks, the Mycenaeans, and we visit the city of Myce Mycenae right there as well with this ancient lion's gate and stacked stones. And then we visit a Greek theater in Epidavros and a healing center. From there, we go across to the uh, we go across the Gulf and we stay two days on Hydra. Hydra is a traffic-free island where the only uh, uh, type of traffic is foot traffic or donkey traffic and a couple of garbage trucks. And that is it. So we love the island of Hydra. This is a dinner we had at a place called, of all places, look on the wall, plates. The word for plates, piatti. So this, the restaurant was called piatti. And this is uh, our piatti for the night, some of the food that we had there. Windmills abound there. And it's just a beautiful place. Uh, we so much enjoy staying in Hydra. From there, we take a fast boat back to Athens. Of course, we go to the Acropolis, see the Parthenon there on the top of the Acropolis uh, to the uh, goddess uh, Agena, and then a couple of other temples up there as well. And also, uh, sorry, Charlotte said Athena, not Agena, Athena, and a couple of theaters dotted as well. This is looking from the Placa region and the ancient Agora there, the Roman Agora marketplace, up to that massive rock called the Acropolis. There are also some uh, Greek Orthodox churches scattered about. And as you can see, a lot of graffiti and motor scooters as well. From there, we fly down 45 minutes to the island of Santorini for two nights, three nights. And uh, we, we visit this, uh, this uh, town called Ia and uh, see these beautiful uh, white uh, houses with blue domes. But we stay on the other side of the island, which has beaches like this. This is called the Black Beach. There's a red beach and a white beach. But this is a, a great little area to stay. And then we take a cruise on the caldera and uh, looking for the boat we're on, similar to this one here in the foreground, looking up through these red rocks up to the town of Ia. And just some uh, another Greek salad there. Uh, our town that we stay in is at Parisa. And this is, uh, I think, uh, one of our final dinners, our final dinner in the island of Santorini. We take that cruise, as I mentioned as well, seeing that view, and we finish up at the airport in Athens. We're also doing brand new this year, what I call Budapest and Cro Croatia land and sea in 13 days, and a Croatian cruise, which connects to it at the end uh, in eight days. And uh, so I'm offering a hundred bucks off of that. I've done that one other time earlier this year. We've got, I think, only two, two staterooms remaining. So room for like four people. Uh, on this trip. So if you are free in the 23rd of September and can do that, we'd love to have you join us. It begins in Budapest, which is in Hungary. And uh, then we uh, visit Budapest for two days. And then we leave that and go into the hinterlands, I say, of Croatia and visit the Baranya region in Slovenia. Slo Slovenia, I mean, not the country but the region of Slovenia. And we visit that, and uh, this is uh, one of the areas that are there that is, uh, the people are from the country, and they're farmers, and raise a lot of uh, grain and everything else. There are also the vineyards and everything there as well. And uh, Charlotte and I were able to go there for the first time just last month and really enjoyed meeting the, the people there and made connections with them. It's also a region where they um, uh, there's a stud farm and a farm where they raise the Liposoner horses and ultimately ship off the Liposoner stallions to go up to Vienna uh, to be a part of the Royal Habsburg family and everything there. Uh, a couple of the other churches, and most of the towns have churches that look like this in that same style. We go to the capital of uh, Croatia called Zagreb, and we visit that as well. We're there one night, and then we go to these this lake region, which is just cascading waterfalls over lime rock cliffs called the Plitvis Lakes, and it is just beautiful, and uh, we enjoy being there. We'll spend the night there but we'll also have a full day to experience these walkways and walking around this lake area and see these cascading waterfalls. From there, we go down to the 
Adriatic Sea to the town of Split. We're seven nights in uh, the Adriatic coastline, and I've just kind of put a collage of, of uh, photos together showing you that. This is Split, some of the regions there. This is one of the national parks and islands that are one of the island that are is one of the islands off the coast of Croatia. This is uh, looking at the town of Dubrovnik, which is where this cruise ends from high on the mountaintop above. Uh, this, I guess, is just a shot that I snapped of our uh, cabin on our boat uh, some years back that we were on our ship. There's uh, maybe 17, 18 cabins on the ship. So um, on the boat, on the boat, the ship. And so it's a, a small boat ship. It has a captain and a crew of about seven people, and they treat you very, very well. And we just enjoy doing that. And that's why we're we're basically uh, getting a group together to do that with us this coming September. Of Dubrovnik as well. Every day on that cruise, we stop a couple of times a day and have a swim stop in the crystal clear waters. And it is beautiful to do that. This is the town of Korchula. And just another look at it. That's a, I want maybe one of the private boats that is around. Uh, we have dinner. Lunch is served every day on the boat, as is breakfast. But uh, most of the evenings we have off because we dock in cities and, and towns and, and ports there. And we're in, in that area and can go in and experience the town and dining on our own. Uh, the final evening, though, we do have a dinner aboard as well. Uh, there's a lot of wineries in Croatia. If you meet a Croatian, they'll tell you everything began there. Capers, uh, wine, uh, you know, the Venetians, everything was invented in Croatia. This is a, a group of us sitting, uh, getting ready for our grand farewell captain's dinner the last night. Okay, so just to review real quickly, uh, any Italy tour, 100 bucks off. Any Best of Greece tour that we're doing in October, 200 bucks off. Croatia in September, 100 bucks off. And then real quickly, I'm going to zoom through this like uh, a, a speed demon because uh, Charlotte and I went last May to uh, Tanzania and right on the equator in Africa. And so I'm dubbing this, David McGuffin is exploring beyond Europe, Tanzania safari in 10 days. Um, just so you know, we are in vehicles like that on the, on the right, on the left-hand side. We're planning on putting four people in each vehicle. So we're going to have either eight or 12 people going with us. We hope the uh, approximate dates are, depending on the flights and everything, right around the middle of May, May 16 to 25. And uh, it's the priciest tour that I've ever done, but that's just what it costs to hire out uh, those kind of vehicles and the camp and everything else. So 98.79. So I'm going to put out more information online and and everything later on about it but i just wanted to premiere it right now notice where tanzania is that little red dot at the very top is sicily and you can see where greece is but the continent of africa is below that so it is right below the equator day one we fly from we flew from amsterdam uh all day and arrived late at night about nine o'clock at kilimanjaro international airport uh, and we uh, went through customs there and immediately went to this area, the town of Orusha, which is about an hour away. We stayed at this River Trees Resort Villa for two, two nights, and we thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, this is our little, uh, our little cabin, our little hut there. And it's got a pool right out the door. This is me having my cappuccino and breakfast that morning. Uh, there was a market that set up in the in the square of the Arusha village. We also went around and uh, looked around the town of Arusha, met this uh, gentleman who we actually bought a painting from, Robert um, Aswani. Robert Aswani. And uh, so uh, Charlotte has a memento of him, of his painting as well. But he was a very nice character and made a special point to come out to his studio and talk to us as well. It's just a little view of, uh, this is a major town, and this is what it looks like all up and down the streets of Orusha. Now we're back at our River Tree Lodge. This is the dining region. We dined outside the whole time at these tables. And from that point, day three, we head out into uh, Tangeri National Park. And uh, this is uh, photos by my friend David McKay. 
And uh, so I'll point out those two, but uh, we'll be there for a day and an evening. And from there, we go to Gora Gora Crater, uh, which is, we'll spend four days there. This is a, well, a crater, uh, we'll, sorry, we'll spend two days there, day four and five, uh, going on a safari and meeting these people called the Maasai people as well, who uh, you may recognize as characteristic people and uh, from that region. And they have very ritual types of dance and everything else. Uh, a little boy, my friend David McKay, snapped this picture of a little Maasai boy as well. From then, we get on a plane and fly a short distance to the Serengeti. It's a small plane. It's about 12 seats, about 12 people or so. That's who we went with. Uh, they're all our friends now that we went with in May of this past year. And uh, we showed up at the uh, airstrip, uh, Saranera Airstrip in the Serengeti National Park. And from then, we got into one of those safari vehicles, and we started what they call a game drive. And the very first things we saw and smelled were these hippopotamus, uh, these hippos. And we saw those almost every day as we went by a portion of the river that throw, flows through the park. This is uh, pretty much just what the terrain looks like. Grasslands was dotted with trees. We saw these guys, zebras, almost every day. <laughs> oh yeah, these guys are giraffes. <laughs> I just wanted to see if anybody was paying attention. <laughs> we saw these guys, these giraffes, almost every day, and then we stayed in a, a luxury tented camps. And uh, so we've uh, we've contracted with our friends who own a tented camp called the Dancing Duma, a luxury tented camps, and we'll be there every night as well. But uh, just to give you an idea of what it's like, and right out the back door, you see all these uh, antelope-looking things. They all have different names, but we just kind of remembered to call them antelope animals. Antelope animals. Do you want to come over here and help me out? You sure? <laughs> uh, that's uh, it's, it, you can see it's pretty roomy. That's our bed. Our bathroom's uh, also there, and it's got a a flushing toilet and a shower and hot water and everything else. So it's very nice. But you just have to, when it gets dark, you can't walk out by yourself. You have to uh, radio to the uh, headquarters, which is just 100 yards away. And if you need to uh, go outside, they'll come and escort you just in case there's any wild game around. These are the vehicles that we were in. Like I said, we we're uh, planning on uh, the, the vehicle seat eight people. But we're going to go with four people in them and a driver, and uh, that's the way to go. We we saw vehicles like this and extended, and even buses that had open tops that would set twenty that set that seated twenty four people or so, and just realized that is not the way to go. We're going to go with a guide and a driver and four of us, and make sure that we experience uh, a safari the right way. This is the Cape Buffalo. Sunset the first day, back to the uh, tented camp, luxury camp for dinner. Next day, day seven, eight, and nine of this, we do game drives every day. Now, uh, I'm, a game drive, in my mind, I'm a hunter. And when you drive game here in Florida, it's people driving game toward you so you can shoot them. But this is not that. This is just driving around looking for game in these vehicles and that's what we're doing with cameras and so here are those zebras again oh wait a minute the giraffes again and uh and so we had a great time i don't even remember that uh i guess it was, was toilet out in the stop. middle of, yeah. toilet out in the middle of nowhere so yeah that we had to look for lions before we got out yeah, yeah. <laughs> but typical typical area typical trees and vegetation this was a um uh a female lion, lioness, up in the tree that we saw, and that was pretty dang amazing. This was a lion and a lioness laying in the grass. Cape buffalo, uh, again, one of those antelope animals and some giraffe in the background. Just another one. This this lion was just taking a nap up in the tree. Lioness was taking a nap up the tree. There. Here are the zebras uh, and elephants. We saw quite a few elephants as we went. Um, I guess that's just looking down the road. Uh, there was a road just like this that an elephant came right toward us 
and just kept walking. We had to pull off and let the elephant pass by. I don't think I have a photo of that, but there's a lion. Charlotte and I <laughs> at one of the camps there behind us is uh, where we were going to have dinner. And we were taking a quick selfie to get down there before it got dark. Uh, there's a safari vehicle with a, a photographer there and the giraffe just paying no attention and walking right on by. This is, uh, we call it, uh, I guess, a safari jam. I don't remember what they were all going up to see. I Do think you? that's a leopard in the tree. A leopard, the, in, uh... a leopard in the tree. And so all the vehicles, they have CB radios. And so everyone congregates here. But our guide, Patrick, who I'll show you a photo of him in a minute, it was very patient. And he just waited and waited. They all left. We pulled right up there and could see the leopard in yeah. the tree with his um, fresh kill. Fresh kill of a uh, oh, wildebeest. Geez. Wildebeest. Wilda. Wilda beast. Another lion. Cheetahs. Lion. Oh, that's the cheetah. We drove a long way to find those cheetahs. Uh, one day out into the Serengeti, the zebras. Uh, Pride rock is what I call that from the Lion King, but I didn't think they really existed. But that's that right out there. There's a um, what is that? A lion lioness. as well. And another lioness and three little cubs, maybe five little cubs, I think, for there. A giraffe I got a photo of on the last night uh, before we were coming in. We got up real early one morning, 4.30 or so, and went out uh, before daybreak, took a hot air balloon ride, and that was just phenomenal across the Serengeti. And then they gave us fake champagne to celebrate uh, our proper landing as well. We had a breakfast under this tent and continued our safari as well. That's our guide, Patrick, and he is top notch. And uh, we hope we'll have him again as one of our guides uh, in our vehicles as well, drivers and guides. From that point on, day 10, we get back in a, that small little airplane. In May, they let me be co pilot. So there I am. I really did fly, not fly. I sat in that seat and filmed as we went all the way back to Arusha. And we stayed in Arusha the rest of the day and that night. And then we, uh, along about uh, nine o'clock, we went to the airport, boarded our uh, flight um, back to uh, Amsterdam. That's where we went. I guess our friends went on a flight. We stayed overnight because we were here this the next morning and then flew back, maybe. Yes. I'm not sure. But a nice camp, the River Tree camp there. David McGuffin's Exploring Beyond Europe, somewhere right around the 16th of May, 2025. Uh, contact me if you're interested and want more details on it, and I'll put them all together. Thank you guys for sticking with me tonight, and for those of you who stuck with me for the last two nights on my three three nights of showcasing Europe, I appreciate your um, uh, attention, and I appreciate your loyalty, and uh, I appreciate your friendship most of all. So with that said, thank you guys for listening. Your adventure starts right here with David McGuffin's Exploring Europe. And this is where Leslie usually turns everything off, but I'm just gonna shut this lens and have dinner and try to figure out how to cut this thing off for real. Which 